In the last video, we took an intuitive look at, at the meaning of an antiderivative or what's also called an indefinite integral, but we didn't really look too much at how you actually compute them. We looked at what they meant, but not the rules to actually follow through and do one for given functions. So here we're going to go through a list of integration rules. This is very similar to the derivative rules you learned um, earlier, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, things like that, that helped you more easily take derivatives of functions. Here's the shortcut rules that help you more easily integrate functions. There's a, a list. It's not quite as long of a list as with derivatives, but um, but it is a, a good list of shortcuts. So here we go. All right, first up, the constant multiple rule. Um, we remember, I, and by the way, as we go through these, I'm going to give you the derivative analogy to kind of help us understand the integral version of it. So the constant multiple rule for derivatives said that if you're going to differentiate some constant multiple of some function, what you could do is you could pull the constant out of whatever it was you were trying to differentiate and and I like to call it a tag along constant and just differentiate the meat of the function the actual function itself and you keep the constant so this will be c times the derivative of f which we'll call f prime of x well there's an integral version of the same thing if you're integrating some multiple of some function f of x you are allowed to move constants outside of an integral. Now, if your expression has an x, a variable, it cannot come outside the integral. That's very important. But constants are allowed to move outside the integral, integrate just the, the meat of the function, and, uh, and be on your way. So a simple example, if you're integrating you know, 5x squared, um, you could pull the 5 out, pull the 5 out, and just integrate x squared. That, that might make it easier. All right, second rule is the sum and difference rule for derivatives. This said if you had uh, a sum or difference, it, it did not really matter which one, um, derivatives split over sums and differences. So if you had a polynomial, for instance, uh, all you had to do was differentiate each individual term in the polynomial and then put those derivatives together as a sum or difference. So that was a very nice rule. It definitely made our life a lot easier. Um, now the integral version is the same thing. If we're going to integrate uh, uh, sum or difference of two functions, then we can just integrate each of them individually and not have to worry too much about it. So integral of f plus or minus g would be the integral of f of x dx. Compute that integral plus or minus the integral of g of x dx. And I hope some of these don't get hidden behind my picture in picture. But um, integrate the first expression plus or minus the second expression. Um, all right, next up is the, the power rule. We use this one all the time for derivatives. This is when you have a, uh, uh, some power of a variable expression like x squared, x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, etc. The pattern, if you'll recall, was you take this exponent here and you move it out of the exponent and it becomes the coefficient. And then whatever the exponent is, you decrease it by one. So n x to the n minus one. That would be the derivative. The exponent goes down by one. But when you start thinking integrals and you start thinking what function, if you took its derivative, would give you x to the n? Well, then that, that's a different question. Um, see here, the exponent would have to be 1 higher so that when you decrease that by 1, you would get x to the n if you, you know, went ahead and took a derivative. So instead of going down by 1, it'll be x to the n plus 1. It'll go up by 1. Now, there's a problem, though. Just in your mind, imagine taking the derivative of, of this, well, let's pick a number, like x to the fifth. The derivative of x to the fifth, it would reduce to an x to the fourth, that's great, but it would have an extra 5x to the fourth. It, it would have an extra coefficient out front there. So how could we get rid of that unwanted coefficient that would be in front? Well, it's very simple. You would just divide by whatever this exponent is. So in general, we'll say x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So as an example, the integral of x to the fourth would be x to the fifth over 5, right? And that over 5 takes care of the, 
the five that would be coming down if you tried to check your answer uh, by differentiation and whatnot. Okay. Now with all these, I am leaving off a plus C, so don't don't get on me too bad about these. Well, these actually haven't been integrated, but this expression I actually took the integral, um, so you could put a plus C here for the the indefinite integral if you wanted to. All right, the log rule. We know this one for derivatives. Sorry, for derivatives. The derivative of the natural log function is a, a very specific derivative. It'd be 1 over x. Now, I'll tell you what we don't do for the log rule as far as integration goes. We are not going to integrate natural log of x. That's what most people uh, do not, that's not what people mean when they say log rule in, in regards to integration. What they're referring to is just the, the reverse of the statement that we just wrote. See, here's a derivative of natural log that gives you 1 over x. Well, we would say that the integral of 1 over x, integral of 1 over x, comes back to a natural log expression. Now, one small detail that's, that is important, um, the domain for the log function is only positive values, where the 1 over x function is defined for all x's other than 0. So to, to combat this um, discrepancy, when we integrate, the natural log function will have an absolute value of x. So it's a small detail, but an important detail. And what that absolute value does is it allows you to even plug in negative values, and the natural log function would still be you know, able to, to be defined there, um, having those absolute values there. All right, the product rule is the next um, popular derivative rule that we use all the time. We'd say that the derivative of f of x times g of x is 100% not f prime times g prime. It's very important to realize you cannot just differentiate these two expressions like you did when it was a sum. There was an actual product rule. It looks something like this. Derivative of the first expression times the second expression plus the first expression times the derivative of the second expression. That, that was the product rule. You had to follow that pattern when you had a product of, let's say, x times sine x. You would have to follow that, that pattern here uh, to correctly differentiate it. Okay. Bad news. Here comes the, the, the worst news of, of the video here. There is not a, a very good uh, analogy to the product rule as far as integration goes. Now, um, if you're very well versed in calculus and you're just watching this for some other reason, you might call, call my bluff on this and say, well, actually, there is a way you can integrate products. Uh, well, th there kind of is a way to integrate products, that, that, but we're not going to cover that in, video, in this video. It's a somewhat advanced technique. Um, most people don't learn that technique until Calculus 2. If you're interested in watching my, my video on it, uh, if you want to go ahead and, and learn it a little bit ahead of schedule, it's called Integration by Parts. But most, most people would say that just given a random product, it's not very easily integrated. All right? As a matter of fact, even integration by parts isn't a cure-all that works 100% of the time. It's just uh, something you can try if you have a, a product listed. Um, but sometimes th these can be pretty, pretty difficult. Um, so for right now, we're just going to say that there's not really a good equivalency there. Uh, the same thing is true with the quotient rule. Um, we know that you know if you take the derivative with respect to x of f of x over g of x, there's a, a long drawn out expression that would give you this derivative called the quotient rule. Um, it's kind of long and drawn out, so forgive me for not writing it. It's not really the, the point of this video. Um, what I want to illustrate, though, is that there's no good integral version of the quotient rule. Um, and what you absolutely cannot do is if you have the integral of f over g, let's say, you cannot simply integrate the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator, and call it a day. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, so in integral, uh, integrals of fractions can be s somewhat difficult. Um, now, there is a way you might could get away with using like the, the log rule, you know, along um, with, with some other integration techniques that we'll make some videos on later. Because uh, you have a fraction here, so if you could somehow fashion it correctly, 
you could you know possibly get a, a log rule out of this but um, for basic rules as far as basic rule goes there's not really a good version of the, the quotient rule for integration all right chain rule uh, this this is kind of 50 50 um, if, if you had uh, composition or layers uh, of in an expression we could take as derivative using the the chain rule which looks like this the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x f of g of x the way you differentiate this is you take the derivative of the outside and you leave the inside uh, as we well know followed by the derivative of the inside that's this very good very good rule that we use all the time um, there's not a, a fantastic version of the chain rule as far as integration is concerned the closest thing that we have and I'm not going to cover it in this video because it takes a little while to set up usually it's taught as its own separate topic uh, is something called u substitution so you, you're welcome to to pull up this video to learn about how you would integrate things when you have layers and, and composition this is a a very um, popular integration technique but um, it's a little long for this video but well, that's about the best analogy we have the trig integrals uh, well we know all the trig derivatives you know the derivative of sine and cosine I'll just do the first three sine cosine and tangent derivative of sine is cosine x the derivative of cosine x would be negative sine x and the derivative of tangent would be secant squared x so we, we know those three plus there's three others are just for time's sake I'm not going to write all six this would be secant squared x when we're talking about the integral rules um, what we typically mean is we're going to take basically these things that were the derivatives and then say that the integral of those things comes back to these original things so for instance uh, one integral uh, trig rule would be the integral of cosine x dx would be sine x and we would say the integral of sine x dx that would be negative cosine x dx or, I'm sorry negative cosine x plus C and then lastly we would we would not typically say as a normal trig integral the integral of tan x we wouldn't say that because that's not the correct order the derivative of tangent was secant squared the derivative of tangent would be secant squared so we would say the integral of secant squared x dx would be tan x let me slide up so you can see it would be tan x so we only integrate very natural things that wouldn't very clearly be the derivative of some well-known trig function um, we can integrate tan x but it would not be a very easy uh, straightforward integral to do uh, so I'm just talking about what we what we're referring to when we say the basic integration rules here exponential rule super easy the derivative with respect to x of e to the x as we all know is e to the x it's itself it doesn't change any if you just have e to the x so the integral of e to the x dx that would be e to the x it doesn't doesn't change a lot and again I'm not gonna write all the plus C's here for, for this video here but um but yeah it's um, the same thing going in the forward direction taking the derivative it'd be itself when you integrated it and bring it back okay um, ju we're just gonna end this video with a super uh, simple example here um, one thing I will say as far as something to keep in mind as you're practicing all these integrals is you have to be really good at manipulating expressions around um, because our, our list of integral rules is about this big where our list of derivative rules was about this big we had a lot more derivative rules to work with so we have to be a lot more clever here all right prime example this first one here how on earth are we going to integrate that I didn't see any rule above that had a square root in there well we would have to think of this as all right constant multiple we pull that 5 out 5 times the integral of x to the 1 half power we, we would rewrite it in a, in a 
better way so that it fits one of our very limited rules like the power rule. All right, here we'd have um, minus two times the integral of cosine x. Right here we'd have plus six times the integral of one over x dx. Because you can pull a six out of this guy's integral. And in case it's not clear, I'm integrating each individual term by using the sum and difference rule that's ab above on your screen. Uh, plus 10 times the integral of e to the x dx. I will integrate each of these respectively. All right, this integral, you'd have 5, so tag along constant. You increase x to the 1 halves exponent by 1, you get x to the 3 halves, divided by 3 halves. You remember the, the power rule, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Now, this could get kind of cumbersome if you had x to a fraction divided by a fraction. That just doesn't look pretty. So, so you're, you're probably familiar with the algebra technique of instead of dividing by a fraction, you can multiply by a reciprocal. So we can multiply by two-thirds, and that's the same thing. All right, minus 2 sine x, right, integral of cosine is sine, plus 6, integral of 1 over x is natural log of the absolute value of x, plus 10, integral of e to the x dx is e to the x plus c. Now you might ask, why did all three, all four of these not need a plus c? Well, if you had put one, a, a c1, a c2, a c3, and a c4, for instance, a constant plus a constant plus a constant plus a constant would just give you a new constant. So we'll just save all of them and write as, as a generic plus c here. Uh, now this one admittedly is kind of a simple example. Um, to, to do uh, really a lot of integrals, you're going to need to watch the video on u substitution. This is a big one because we would have been in big trouble if this had been 5 times the square root of x plus 2 even. It seems like it's such a small detail, but that technically would not have been the power rule. Or 10e to the 4x, you know, on and on. Uh, you have to know how to handle composition of two functions. Uh, another thing is that um, typically when you get better at these, you do not have to rewrite this integral symbol four times like I did. Um, you would just know you can integrate each individual expression. So um, I don't want to make this video too long talking about it any more than I have. Uh, next we're going to lay out a, a series of different videos with lots of different integral examples from easy ones to hard ones. Uh, in this video I really just wanted to, to kind of lay down the rules for us uh, for as far as our shortcut rules is integration techniques.